When you're solving trigonomic equations, trigonomic, trigonometric equations, there are a couple of general rules you're doing. In this chapter, they're not asking you for just one solution. They're asking you for the general solution. So previously we've we've done general sorry, previously we've done one solution, so we've worked out which quadrant and all that sort of stuff. This time you need to find out the general solution which has an n in it for the number of periods you're chasing. Okay? So I'm just going to write these down. These are in your book. If sine of x equals a, then x is 2n pi plus sine of the minus 1 of a, and x is also equal to 2n plus 1 pi minus sine of negative 1 a. So we'll run through this, but I'm going to write down all of the general solutions for you before we go too much further. For cos x equaling a, the general solution is x is 2n pi plus or minus cos the minus 1 of a. And for tan x equals a, the general solution x equals n pi plus and the minus 1 of a. So these are, the, these are the formulas you need for working out the general solution. All the stuff you've learnt about the unit circle still applies. So if it's in the first quadrant, you just find the angle. If it's in the second quadrant, you can work out whether it's positive or negative. So it's all that same stuff still applies, but this time we're using these rules here. So let's do a couple of examples. So I don't want to do one because it's just exact values tables. So question one, you just do exact values table. So let's start with question two. Find theta to the nearest degree, nearest tenth, sorry, in each of the following between 0 to 360. That's what this question is saying. Find the angle to the nearest degree between, or nearest tenth of a degree between 0 and 360. So the first one, A, is sine theta equals 0 0.6. So on your calculator, when you do theta equals sine the minus 1, 0 0.6, what do you get? Closest, 36.9. 36. 36. Now, that's fine, but your calculator is not as smart as you are, believe it or not. <laughs> Let's go back to the unit circle. You've just found that angle there. I should have done it in a different colour. This one here. Much better. I can see it clearly now. Is there any other point where sine is going to be a positive 0.6? We're in the first quadrant. We're in, in the second quadrant. We need to find this one here. So all that symmetry stuff still comes in. So you've actually got to do and... 180 minus 36.9, which equals 143.1 degrees. So there are two solutions for the sine, theta being 0 0.6, within 0 and 360. There's in the first quadrant and the second quadrant. So all that stuff you've learned about symmetry still applies. Making sense? Mm -hmm. Right. So let's go a little bit harder. For question three, it asks you to find the values between 0 and 4 pi to three decimal places unless you find exact values. Part of question A, sine x equals 0 0.8, is not exact values. So that's just the same, only doing it over 4 pi instead of 2 pi. So what does that mean in terms of the unit circle? We're doing sine, it's positive, so we're going to have one here and one here in one circuit. But we're also going to have, because we're doing 4 pi, 
we're going to have another one there and another one there. So those are the four angles we need to find, or the four values we need to find. So you do the same process. X is equal sine the minus 1 of 0 0.8, which comes out at what, Pat? 140. 0.03. 0.013. 0.012. What's that mean? Does it mean anything? Yeah. So what is it? You have to do it with the last thing. You're going to have to, yeah. So why does it come out at that value? When the other one came out at like 30 degrees, why is it coming out at that value? Why 0 0.013? What's, what's going wrong here? Did you put it in the calculator? Oh, did you know what's wrong? I know part of what's wrong. Oh, good. So, was it mine? Was it mine? No, no, no. I put it in exactly the same. Back here, we were asked for it in degrees, weren't we? Mine says 53.1. Right, and that's in degrees. We need to have that in radians. So when you're working in a domain of pi, or anything to do with pi, convert yourself to radians. So can we swap our calculators to radians and redo that? Do you know how to do it on that one case? Yeah, you can times it by pi over 180 and stuff like that. 0.927. That's fine, 0 0.927 will do it. Okay, so it's important that you recognise which mode you need to be in while working in that question. So this one, because we're in a domain of 0 to 4 pi, we should be working in radians. They give you that in the question. So 0 0.927. Now, I need to work out this one here now, the green one. On our first circuit, our first two pi, we're going to hit the green one again. How do I work that out? How do I yeah, work that out? But what's 180 when we're working in radians? Pi. No. Pi. It's pi. So I need to do pi minus 0.927. Do we actually use pi? Yep. Okay, so I've got one solution there, two solutions there. Third solution is going to be 2 pi plus... 0.927, so that's a full circuit, plus that little bit again. And the fourth solution is going to be 3 pi minus 0.927. 2 is 2.214. So that's the red on my thing. That'll be orange. That green one is supposed to be there. Ignore it from there. So this one was seven point two one zero. Seven point two one zero. Yep. And that's orange. Eight point four nine seven. Four nine eight. So that's how easy that is. It's still the same stuff. The hardest bit, Braith, the hardest bit is working out which units, like what units you're working, whether you're working in degrees or radians. And then it's just a matter of draw yourself a little sketch and say, okay, well, if I'm going around the circle twice, I'm going to hit the red one there. The green one is also positive. I'm going to come back around. I'm going to hit the orange one and then the purple one. Well, it's because this says it's positive. If that was negative, I'd have to rearrange it and do, like, it would be different. It would be in, in this quadrant and this quadrant. But because it's positive, I know it's in those top two quadrants. Right? So that's question three. So question five, let's skip over question four and go to question five. Question five asks you to find exact over zero to two pi. Okay, exact where possible. So we've got two sine x equals 0 0.586. What do you think I'm going to have to do here? I'm going to have to rearrange it for the first bit, aren't I? So what am I going to do, Pat? So 
sine x equals 0 0.2 uh, 9 3 yeah, I think yep so x equals sine to the minus 1 of that and again we're in radians so make sure your calculator is in radians so what is x equal You've got radians, Kate. Zero point two nine seven will work. No, that's right. That's the first one, though. So now that we've got that, we draw our sketch, and we say, "Well, that's in the first quadrant," because my calculator always does it in the first quadrant. I now need to find it in the second quadrant. How am I going to do that? How am I going to find it? How am I going to find the green one? How am I going to find it in the second quadrant? What do I need to do? Yeah, but what's 180 when working in radians, pi. Pat? Pi. So we've got to go pi minus 0 0.297. But we have to actually do pi. It's 2.844. 2.844. Okay, needs to be 5, does it? Okay. So that's the green one. And because we're only going around the circle once, because it said only 0 to 2 pi, and the only time sine is positive is in these top two quadrants, then we're done. Does that make sense? So all this stuff is the same. It gets really a lot trickier in the next section. So last thing we're going to talk about for this particular chapter is question 9. It's asking you to find the general solution, and apparently you're not allowed to use your calculator, which yeah. is a bit of a pain. But the first question, so 9a is 2 cos x minus root 3 equals 0. What am I going to do? I'm going to rearrange it. What am I going to do, Pat? Take root 3 over 0. Divide by 2. Is it still in radians or is it in radians? It doesn't matter. It's the exact same values table. Exact values table. Perfectly yeah, right. So now you've got to find the exact values table. So you go to your exact values table and you say, okay, root 3 on 2, what is it? For radians or for... I don't care which, it doesn't really worry me. 10, yeah, so 10 hundred pages away. You should have a copy of this in your summary book and you should be referring to it almost consistently. All right? Almost consistently. Almost constantly is probably what I meant to say. Pi over 6. Pi over 6. So it could be pi over 6 or it could be 30 degrees. Yep. So they're my two possible ways I can go. According to the exact values table, cos to the minus 1 of root 3 on 2 is pi on 6 or 30 degrees. Now, I've got to find the general solution. It's asking me for the general solution. So we go back to those formulas I wrote down right at the start of this video. And we use this one here. So we say... x equals 2n pi plus or minus cos the minus 1 of root 3 on 2. Okay, And we know cos the minus 1 of root 3 on 2. All right, I'm going to put in the pi on 6. So I know that x in general is 2n pi plus minus Could be different pi on 6. No, because when you do the exact values table, when you hunt out root 3 on 2 in the exact values table and it gives you the angle, you've actually done inverse cos. You've actually done cos the minus 1. That's the whole point. All right? So x, that's the general solution. That's it for that, that's it for that question. That's how easy it is. You just use these guys here and your exact values table to work out what the general solution is. When you get... To sign, you need to remember that you've got to pull both of them. And this section here, I'm going to write that back here now. This section here. All right, that's where you use your exact values. If you may, if you're doing it without a calculator, that's where you use your exact values so table. You do sin, you do both of them. Yep, so x is this and this. All right, and tan is this, cos is this. That's it. Make sense? Yep. 